How's it going everyone? I'm Sean and welcome back to the channel. So you want to get into guitar building? Well, it is a big wide world to get into. So where do you start? If you've looked into it at all or watched people building guitars, like myself, then you'll notice that we use tools. We use a lot of different tools. So where do you start? How do you choose and decide what to prioritize for yourself when you're just getting started? Well, welcome to my essential tooling guides for guitar building. In this video, I'm gonna go through the five machines that I think are absolutely necessary for building guitars. Maybe not necessary, but preferential. I'll also have a bonus one in at the end for those of you who have maybe potentially a little bit extra cash to splash. It's an expensive one, but so useful. So grab yourself a nice hot cup of tea, coffee, whatever you want, get comfortable, and let's go. Starting off this list, top of the pile, I think probably the one tool I really wouldn't want to build guitars without, and that is a bandsaw. This is a fabulously useful tool, versatile tool, and just essential. For guitar building, we will use this for cutting out the shapes, rough cutting, body shapes, neck shapes, everything like that. It is not the most accurate tool in the world. It is not the one that leaves the best finish. But in terms of actually getting work done, bandsaw, top, top of that list. While it may not be, I guess, the most glamorous, it may not do the most things, simply being able to cut out shapes is so essential for guitar building. You can also fit different blades to these. A nice thin blade will be able to go around corners and shapes really, really easily and accurately, whereas a nice big thick blade, you can use it for resawing to make tops. And being able to make and split your own tops is gonna save you so much money. I definitely recommend get a bandsaw, get a good bandsaw. Spend as much money as you can on getting a bandsaw because it will pay for itself in time. Next up on my list, one that I think goes very well with the bandsaw. I'm saying one, it's, it's kind of one and a half tools. It is a router and also a router table. These are effectively the same tool brought together or take it apart, whichever way you want to look at it. Hand router in your hand, using with templates and a template bit, you can do pickup cavities, routes for anything else you need, neck pockets for doing your truss rod channel, for doing headstock access to your truss rod, anything like this. Very, very handy tool. A router can do pretty much anything if you get inventive with it and get really good with jigs and templates. The other side of the coin is a router table. This is simply, this is exactly what it sounds. It is a router that you take from holding it like this, you turn it upside down, put it into a table, and have the router bit sticking up through it. Simple and easy. What this allows you to do is, well, different things, while being more stable and more safe. With the handheld router, you will clamp your material down and then use the router to go around it. With the table, the router is fixed and the material is free to move. This is helpful in many, many different ways. First of all, straight off the bandsaw, we would stick a template to your material and then use a router table to flush route to refine that shape and really bring it in so it's nice and accurate to a template. I would absolutely recommend using a table setup instead of a handheld because simply if you imagine, if you're doing a neck for example, if you're doing a handheld, only half of the router base is actually supported. It's quite easy to accidentally tip off the side. If that happens, you could potentially ruin your project, ruin an expensive piece of wood, and, well, it would ruin your day as well. On a table, because, because it's a table, you have support all around the router, so you've got no fear of tipping. You have to physically tip the wood, which is a lot less likely, if nothing else. As well as that, You've been able to change the bits in the router table. You can do so many things. You can do roundovers, chamfers, binding channels, anything like that, quickly, easily, accurately. And that's what it's all about. After a router, I'm gonna say sanders. This is spindle sanders, belt sanders, disc sanders, anything like that. Any machine that you would use to shape wood freehand, effectively. A lot of time, even after a router, you may have 
chip out, you may have burn, you may have fluff from the router table, you're gonna to wanna to sand that out. Or if you're making your own templates, you need to be able to sand them. Ideally, standalone machines for each of the three types that I mentioned earlier, spindle sander, belt sander, and disc sander, individual ones is gonna be best. A disc sander is beautiful for getting nice, flat, straight surfaces quite easily, just because of its nature. Belt sanders are like a catch-all. They kind of do a lot of everything, but not everything great. Spindle sander then is for doing your curves, your interior curves, and that is pretty much it. You can get combination machines. A lot of companies do belt sanders that you can swap out for an oscillating spindle sander attachment. They are great. If you're buying one machine, get one of them. You can do the flats on the main belt. They're not as good as a disc sander, but if you're careful, use very light pressure with it, you can get good results. And then you've got the ends for doing your curves. Next up, we have a drill press. So this is probably not the sexiest tool on this list, but one of the most essential. Being able to drill a hole straight and accurate and yeah, straight and accurate. Just being able to do that is so valuable. Even for mounting holes, for drilling out cavities before you take it to a router, which is always a good thing to do. Take out the most amount you can before you go near a router. For drilling string through holes, a drill press. A drill press is one of the most used tools in my arsenal and with good reason. They're not expensive tools. You will always be finding use for it. Every build, every part of every build for me gets touched by a drill press. Lastly on my list of essential machinery is, well, two, realistically. You can get them two in one, but yeah. It's machines to prep your wood. That is usually a jointer and a thickness planer. It is essential to get these two together. A jointer prepares a, f a surface and a planer makes it parallel. A jointer by itself is a little bit useless because you can get one surface nice, but the other surface, you don't know what's going on with it. Planer by itself is useless without good reference. You can get inventive with them, but that usually involves sleds and jigs and all kinds of things that personally, I don't like putting through a thickness planer. These can be difficult to get in sizes big enough for guitar building without spending a lot of money. So do keep that in mind. But having at least the basics is very, very handy. When I was at my home workshop in Ireland, I only had an eight inch jointer. I would use that to prep up halves of body blanks, which I then jointed and everything. And I just took care to make sure that when I glued them, that they didn't go all cocked and on the squiff like that so that they didn't need a huge amount of preparation after gluing because I couldn't send an entire body blank through my thickness player. But it is something that I do consider essential and you should have them. Now I promised you a bonus one and I have a bonus one for you. Do keep in mind this one is super useful, super handy and really expensive for what they are and that is a drum sander. You can use a drum sander instead of or with a thickness planer, as I was talking about earlier. They usually come fairly wide, which is really, really good because they will usually take an entire body blank through them. If your budget allows for one and you have enough room for one, absolutely get one. They are so handy. I'm forever finding uses for a drum sander. When I was in Ireland, I never had one. Now that I'm over here, I have access to one and it's just fabulous. It really is. It really shines when you start to need thickness, thin material, tops for example. If you've only got a five mil top, do not put that through your thickness planer. Unless it's a really, really good thickness planer, and even then, it can just chew up a top and explode it. I've had it happen before. I put a nice top through at five or six mil and you hear a crunching sound and you get shards out the other side. Sometimes it just happens because of the grain orientation, direction, whatever. So a thickness sander, that wouldn't happen. They are much more gentle, they're much slower, which is why I wouldn't recommend only having a thickness sander. But yeah, absolutely one to consider, one to think about if you have that opportunity. And that about does it for my essential list. If you're getting started, hopefully this will help you to decide where to throw your money. If it did help, I'd really appreciate a like, subscribe, all of that carry on. 
If you think I missed anything, leave it down below in the comments. If you have any other opinions on machines that I missed, is there anything in your shop, uh, an overhead pin router, for example, that you have that you, you would say, hands down in the morning, that is the one I would buy, that is the first one I would buy, end of. Let me know down below. Thanks very much, everyone. I'll see you all again real soon.